It is a cold, damp, rainy day today. A big change from yesterday. Inside the tent we are smoking hot though. This little stove does a pretty good job putting off heat. Uh, this stove is relatively small in size. It's certainly not too big. Um, one of the downsides to these stoves is that you do have to process all your fuel, making sure it's cut down to the right length. If wood is too large in diameter, you have to split it down. So you do have to put quite a bit of work into running one of these. That's why I'm primarily going to use this for heat, just to keep the inside of the tent a comfortable temperature, um, mainly during the evenings when I'm sleeping. Um, because of that, I want to make a nice fire pit outside so that I don't have to process all my fuel down really small. I can have a bright fire outside, and then I can do all my cooking, boiling water, and the majority of my camp needs I can focus on doing outside at the fire pit. The stove though is certainly a treat to have. Um, being inside of an enclosed tent, having a stove is quite ideal. Without it, the tents, they hold a lot of the moisture and condensation. So without a stove inside the tent, it becomes really damp and cold, which can make camp life quite miserable actually, especially when you have clothes that need to be dried out, boots that need to be dried out, if you're trying to keep things from freezing. So stove is a big treat to have out here. One thing I wanna talk about real quick is my preference for starting fires. I always carry Strike Anywhere matches inside of a waterproof match safe. This one is made by a company called Yuko. I got this quite a few years ago. It's never let me down. Now, I know a lot of people like to carry lighters. For me, in this northern wilderness, a lot of the time for over half the year, the temperatures are well below zero. And I just find lighters don't work that well in the cold. When they get cold, you gotta warm them up before you can use them. Whereas with a match, it can be minus 40 degrees. This thing's been sitting outside for a week. You can take a match out, strike it, and you have fire. Another thing I like is I can look in here, count my matches, and know that's how many fires I have. Whereas with a lighter, it's kind of a guessing game based on how much fuel you have. The waterproof match safe is a must. You need to keep the matches dry. If they get wet, then you're out of luck. One thing that's important, you want to make sure you check out your O-ring or however your match safe seals to make it waterproof you want to check it out make sure that it's still working properly this one seals off of an o-ring so every now and again i just check the condition of that o-ring to make sure it's in good working order to make sure that this cap is sealing up good against it and that just guarantees me fire in any weather condition i also carry a few extra strike pads inside of here but again these are strike anywhere matches so I do have the luxury of being able to strike these on any rough surface. I know lots of people don't like matches. They say that they don't work well in the rain or if it's really windy. There's definitely strategies and techniques you can use to light a match to make sure that you are successful with it. Perhaps that's something that I'll touch on in the future. But for lighting fires in the backcountry, this is what I prefer. For my outdoor fire, I'm going to move it a little bit further away from the tent since I'm not relying on this fire for warmth at night. It can be a little bit further away, that way if I get it burning hot and bright, sparks are flying, those sparks are less likely to land on the tent and damage it. I think right about here should do. So really nothing much to it. I just cleared the ground of all the vegetation, took it down to mineral soil. I know some people might be a little concerned about me digging my hatchet into the ground. This is really soft, loamy earth. There's no rocks. So I'm not too concerned about using my hatchet to cut up this grass to get down to the soil. But I've cleared an area large enough to where I can have a nice sized fire and made sure that the ground is nice and level so I'm not having my logs roll around on me. My fire is going to stay put where I want it. 
one thing that I've really grown to enjoy having at these more permanent camps is an adjustable pot hanger where I can get my kettle right over the fire, be able to boil water a lot faster and a lot more efficiently. This is a really simple design that I've shown quite a bit in the past, utilizing two straight sticks. You don't need any fancy forked sticks or anything like that, just two straight poles. One's gonna be our vertical pole, one's the horizontal pole, and it uses a short piece of rope to hold it all together. This is adjustable up and down, as well as left and right, which makes it real suitable for use over a campfire. Rather than using another match to light my fire outside, I figured I would just steal some embers from my wood stove. One thing I always keep in my pack is this little foam sit pad. I rarely use it to actually sit on, but it works excellent for fanning coals. I've had quite a few people question why I put this notch on the top side of this horizontal stick versus putting it on the bottom side. I could run the line around this horizontal stick and put a V-notch on the bottom side, run the line around it, and then back around my vertical pole. I prefer to keep it on top, that way if any flames come up on the bottom side here, I'm not compromising my piece of rope. And your fulcrum point is on top rather than on the bottom. So you actually have a little bit more security with this back end popping up if you keep your notch on top. But for the most part, it's just to prevent my cord from burning. This is a synthetic cord that I'm using so it would melt and it would drop my pot and I'd probably lose my water and put out my fire at the same time. So just for safety purposes, I find this to be safer for my rope and a little bit more secure for the whole structure of the system. So there we have it, a real simple fire pit for the camp real easy to make just dug the ground out to mineral soil making sure to remove all the vegetation on top that way we're preventing a potential ground fire we added in our simple pod hanger which is a really nice addition to the camp being able to well, first off maneuver it so easily to position it wherever we want and being able to put our large pot directly over the fire it's going to speed up the water boiling process so i can keep myself hydrated out here this is a i believe it's a five liter stainless steel kettle and it, so it probably holds when it's boiling about four or four and a half liters of water. But being able to have that much water purified, boiled, ready to drink all at once is really nice. I don't have to be boiling water constantly throughout the day. I can get away with probably just doing it once a day, honestly. So uh, a real simple setup for the camp here, but it's going to be a really nice addition. I don't know what the weather is going to be doing. We got some serious rain clouds moving in. It's starting to get dark on me. So we might be in for a little bit of a storm, but if that happens, we can just hunker down in the tent and have a nice little tent day working on some stuff in there. So that's the fire pit for the camp. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.